Hello and welcome back to this tutorial for working with Spacey for the purposes of performing DH. In the last video, we looked at how to start visualizing and customizing the visualization of the HTML objects with display C render. In this video, I'm going to be starting to do something a little bit different, and I'm going to start showing you some real world applications of Spacey based on a question I got from a subscriber who asked if it was possible to use Displacey's render to kind of mark up the text a little differently than the way it was intended. And the user asked if we could identify the narrator and have that be one color of text and mark up quotes in the text and have them change colors based on the speaker. And the subscriber asked if that was possible to do with Spacey. And the answer is yes and no. Uh, the reason why I'm saying yes and no is because we can use Spacey for performing some of those tasks and facilitating the desired end result, but we can't use Spacey exclusively. What we're going to be doing over the next few videos is trying to solve this very large problem by breaking it down into smaller problems. And the way in which we solve smaller problems in Python is by creating functions. So in this video, we're going to have two functions. We're going to create a function that separates everything out into sentences, which I describe in detail in number three in this series, video three. And then we're going to have another function that looks to see if there is a quote within that sentence. And if there is, it's going to extract it. And if there's multiple quotes, it'll extract both of them. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. We're going to start off by creating a function called uh, find sense. And with find sense, we want there to be one uh, argument, and that's going to be equal to chapter one. Now we're going to be able to change this later on, but for right now, we're just going to have it like this so that we can uh, just kind of work with one chapter. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an object of NLP, just like we did before with spacey.load. And we're going to pass in our model, which is going to be E uh, core web SM. I'm using SM, which is the small model, but uh, I recommend using the LG large model. You'll have better results. They'll just take a little longer to populate. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another object. It's going to be doc, which is going to be equal to NLP, and we're going to pass in text. And what that's going to do is it's going to process our text, which is chapter one, and create an object with a spacey object of that marked up text. So what we're going to do is we're going to then do what we did before in video three with sentences. And we're going to say sentences is equal to list and doc dot sense. So what this is going to do is going to allow us to return sentences. So now what we can do is we can say for sent and find sense. Oh, we're going to say found sense. Sorry about that. Found sense is equal to find Sense. We're just going to make it like that. We're going to say for sent and found sense print off. Uh, we're going to say string sent. And what this should do is it should iterate across everything if we've done it correctly. And it's just return chapter one. <laughs> Why is that? Ah, it's because I passed in chapter one as an object or as a string, not as an object. And now it should do it correctly. There you go. You can see it right there. All the sentences now in our output. Uh, output it just like we wanted to see it. Great, so we got that working. Now what we need to do is we need to create a function that allows us to see if that sentence has a quote within it. So the reason why we can't use Spacey for this is because Spacey doesn't have this feature. So we have to fall back on what people had to do before NLPs existed, and we have to fall back on regex. So what we're gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. We're going to create another function called git Quotes. What this one is going to do is it's going to be very simple and it is going to allow us to pass in a text, which is going to be each individual sentence. And what we are going to do is we're simply going to process that quote and see if it actually matches a very specific regex formula. So what I've done up here is I've already gone ahead and imported regex by saying import RE. If you haven't done that, do so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to simply make uh, quotes, which is going to be a list. It's going to be equal to re.findAll. So that's going to be the regex find all function. And we're going to say r. And here's going to be our formula. We're going to say space. And we're going to do one quotation mark. And the reason why we're doing a single quotation mark is because that's how quotes appear in our text. If you're working with a different text, you might have double quotes. This is the time to make adjustments based on the text at hand. And the reason why I'm doing a space here, a space and a single quote, 
is because this is going to allow me to ensure that what I am grabbing is in fact a quote and not a contraction. If like such as won't, don't, etc. If I didn't have this space here, it would be viewing contractions as the start of a quote, and we don't want that. So I'm going to do space, beginning of a quotation mark, and then I'm going to say in regex terms that I want to grab everything between this other item here, which is the end of the quotation mark. So if we have a uh, parentheses, period, asterisk, question mark, it's going to grab everything between two quotation marks and return it to me. And what I want it to analyze is text, which is the uh, item that I'm going to be passing in here. And then I will return quotes. So now what I can do is I can say in our little for loop down here, I can now pass each sentence. I'm going to say, uh, let's make a new object. Uh, we're going to call it string sent. And this is going to be equal to str sent. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to pass in this by saying quotes found quotes is going to be equal to get quotes. And the text that we're going to pass in is str sent. And then what I can do is I can print off found quotes. And if everything was done correctly, it should be processing everything. And what you have here is a bunch of empty lists. And this is because these empty lists are sentences where there was no quotes. So it didn't find anything. So how do we filter them out? Well, quite easily. What we do is we simply say, if found quotes is greater, oh, sorry, if the length of found quotes is greater than zero, so if it has at least one quote found, then print found quotes. And that'll eliminate all those empty, uh, whatchamacallits, empty uh, lists. And now we can see all the quotes. So let's take a look up here with our first sentence. And we see that it's in fact found two quotes. And this is because this is a typical way we do this in English prose. We have, and what is the use of a book, comma, thought Alice, without pictures or conversations. So we've identified that there are in fact two quotes in this sentence, and we've extracted them. We do, however, have a couple false positives that we have to think about in the future, such as orange marmalade, which is not a quote, it's in fact just a label on something. So we have to think about that very carefully. The other thing that this function will not do is it will not identify successfully sentences that are solely quotes. So if a sentence is nothing but a quote, and that's it, it's not going to find that because the way Spacey works in identifying sentences is it looks for complete sentences. It doesn't matter if it's within or without of quotes. That's going to be a separate problem. For right now, we're going to continue solving this one, though. And the next step we have to do is we have to figure out who the speaker is of these quotes, and that's what we're going to solve in the next video. We're going to create a function that will allow us to identify who is actually doing the speaking in this sentence. So that's it for now. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below and visit us at pythonhumanities.com.